Hello all, my name is Neil Witcherly and I'd like to show you around our new DAISY AI software. This is a system we have developed to automatically frame timber floors for the construction industry. We have a number of ways to do this and I would like to take you through these independently. First up though, uh, our software DAISY uh, has a dashboard which you can see on screen now. Uh, there are different ways to uh, operate the software. Uh, we can bring a Revit file in and download an XMLX file out of Revit, uh, upload it to our DAISY dashboard here and fire that up to the cloud to do a design. You'll see there's an existing job in this line which uh, if we go through the Revit side of the software you will see how we got to this position and how we got to a, a successful design. Secondly, we can create a new job uh, if we click on the Create New Job tab and this will take us into a software package that we call DAISYCAD. Uh, within DAISYCAD what you can do is put your own walls in, openings, pipes, uh, select the design output that you want, uh, create a file which can then be uploaded through this dashboard to the DAISY uh, engine on the cloud and get a completed design back. So there are a number of ways of getting a design out for your timber floor uh, either through an existing Revit model or by creating a new job via our DAISYCAD software. Right, for all of you Revit users uh, what you'll need to do is open your design with which you want to design a floor. You will notice in your copy of Revit that there's a new DAISY tab. Uh, getting this will have involved you running uh, our DAISY plugin earlier. You will now get this button which will enable you to prepare your model for floor designs. If you click the DAISY button you will see a new line of, of icons come up. Export walls, import floor, those are the two main buttons. There is a small user guide and there's something that just gives you the, the details about the latest uh, updated version. If you go and click on export walls what you'll find now is a settings uh, box come up. You will need to make all of these settings prior to actually doing a design. The software needs to know what design code and what type of products that you wish to choose. So if you look at the general floor design tab you'll see there's language. Obviously we've got different languages in there so if you select English uh, you'll see the different units. Now if you're operating out of North America you will need to change those to the ones uh, most close to the way you guys operate so I'm going to choose now uh, fractional inches uh, region you've got Europe or North America click on North America and then within North America you've got either Canada or the USA so let's say for this example now we're going to click on Canada you'll see the design standard for Canada is now highlighted uh, and you get a performance level, floor performance level. You can either go with your code minimum, so designing to a maximum deflection uh, or vibration control. Uh, if you decide to upgrade the floor performance level, you can choose a percentage better than, and this will actually tighten up the design controls within your floor. I'm going to set this to code plus five percent. You then have a voluntary deflection limit, so if you also wanted to beef the floor up over and above that floor performance level, you can set the deflection limit that you want. I'm going to leave it at zero at the moment. Um, if you don't put anything in there, it will default back to the standard in code. Right now, you also get the preference on how you're going to support your joists in the floor. So either they're going to be built in or they're going to be set on hangers. So once we've chosen all of those, if you go to the primary floor framing tab, you will see within there that you get to choose the joist type first of all. So within that I'm going to say I want a joist to be an I-beam. You can choose other solid materials but I'm going to set mine to an I-beam. Uh, you then got all the centers, they automatically turn on, but obviously what you can do is turn off those centers that you don't want to design at. You have a preferred beam depth, 
that beam depth now will give you different manufacturers that manufacture beams uh, under that depth. So let's just say, for example, here I choose truss joist. Uh, there is a preferred beam type. I want an eye joist. I could have other types, solid. Let's say I chose a solid LVL. Um, this now will give me a an option to choose the manufacturer, which I've just done, truss joist. And then for timber frame jobs, there is generally rim board required. So within rim board, I'm going to choose LVL. And you'll see there, there's a number of preferred uh, thicknesses of that product. If I stick with one and a quarter inch, it restricts me to just West Fraser. If I then go and choose a wider section size, you'll see I get uh, Boise as an option as well. Um, depending on, on these options, you can choose other manufacturers. I'm not going to choose Trust Choice this time. Let's go with West Fraser. Uh, and then obviously under hanger manufacturers, we're going to go with Canada as we're designing for Canadian products. Now with regards to the secondary floor construction products, uh, you've got your decking thickness. I could choose OSB3, let's say uh, 7 eighths of an inch. It automatically chooses the size for you under that profile. I'm going to leave it at square edges. Uh, decking manufacturer, I don't really mind. And then the decking fixity, I can either have it as nailed or glued and nailed. In this case, let's go for nailed. Uh, we've got no screed topping. We've got a ceiling. I'm going to stick with gypsum half inch. Um, the ceiling is directly fixed to the joists. At the stairwell opening, I'm going to leave as open. We're not putting any sacrificial uh, products in there. Uh, and obviously, if we've got any pipes in that that we want to bring out the model, we can set the hole openings to be slightly oversized to take those pipes. Last thing we'll need to do to create the file, which we can drop into our DAISY package to start the design process for the joists, is we need to choose the level that we're designing. So if I click level, what you'll find there is I want to, in this particular instance, design the first floor joists at the floor level. It's an upper floor and within the building, it's a residential upper floor. So these questions here will dictate the loadings that uh, are allowed for in the floor design. If I click OK at this point, the software will then strip out all the different uh, supporting materials that are required to actually do a floor design. So with regards to that, it will bring in the walls, uh, any pipes that penetrate the floor, and if there's a stair opening set in the model, it will bring that through as well. So the file format that it saved at is an XMLX file. I'm going to save that uh, and I'm going to drop it into a folder on my desktop. So once I hit save, you'll see there it says that it's exported eight levels. Uh, there were 66 walls, one floor opening, and there didn't see any pipes in the design. Right, that is the maximum amount of information that we need to now go and drop that XMLX file into our DAISY software, which will then generate the design for you. Okay, so now we're back into our DAISY software, uh, and what we want to do is we want to bring in the file that we've just created uh, in the Revit uh, output, uh, and what we want to do is upload an existing file. There are two ways of doing it. We can create a new job, which is a completely new way, which we'll show you in another video, uh, uh, but the Revit users will use upload existing files. So what we want to do is we want to click on update or upload existing files. Uh, that asks us for a job reference. So right now I could put in uh, Joe Blogs Builder. And what it's looking for now is for the file that I created uh, in the output from the Revit job. So I've gone to the file where I saved this, I grab that file. I drag and drop it, or I could use the browse facility, uh, but for now I've used the drag and drop. Uh, you can do multiple jobs. If I had 10 jobs in there, I could select the whole lot and bring the whole lot through in one. 
uh, and now what it's looking for are design options so within uh, the actual daisy software uh, there are a further few little um, tricks that we've got to to get the design streamlined for you so one you could override the floor performance value which you've already set in the output from Revit uh, and then you could actually drag the percentages in here uh, or you've got construction time prioritization and what that does is if I select none uh, it basically allows me to do a design where centers of joists and everything else go out the window joists can be put at whatever centers up to the maximum obviously but any other centers uh, are available so what that means though is that the carpenters have got a lot of cutting to do on the decks uh, if I set it to reduce which is our standard position uh, it's a bit of a halfway house so what tends to happen is the software looks at the design and it tries to get to a place where the design utilizes best centers for the joists so the cheapest joist layout but also has some input from the decking sizes and tries to conform to uh, the decking sizes as well if we want to force the job to go completely with the decking sizes i.e. Uh, work to centers that minimize the cuts i.e. in this case no cuts uh, we'd go and set that to minimize right now I'm just going to set it to reduce and then what I need to do is go and tell it to run the job I could save the job first and then run it from the dashboard but in this instance I'm actually going to run the job so when I run it you'll see the job has now come up on the daisy dashboard uh, you can see when it was created and the status at the moment is pending that status there will change as the software uh, pushes that piece of, 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 of the file, the XMLX file, uh, into the, the design side of the software. So right now it's pending. Uh, at some point that will change to running. And once that's actually running, uh, the DAISY software takes over. It runs it in the cloud and we then wait for a design to come back. So for now, uh, that's now up and running and we now need to sit back and wait for that job to design. I will get back to you as soon as that is now ready and I can show you what that looks like once the design is actually completed. Okay, now we're back. Uh, the job has now just succeeded. You can see on screen where it, uh, it comes up under status as succeeded and you'll now notice that there are a whole load of other little um, icons that have popped up. Uh, if I hover over them, it tells me what uh, what I can do with them. So, for example, edit job. If I click that, uh, it's going to redirect me to a version of DaisyCAD, which we're going to go through uh, in another module. But within DaisyCAD, I can basically change walls, do things, uh, and then I can rerun the job. So uh, we're not going to worry too much about that now. Um, uh, I can download the input file. I don't need that right now. I can rerun the job so if I click on run job it will rerun that uh, obviously if we edit it we can rerun it as well um, we can view the output in DaisyCAD so if I just click on that it will show us now the same sort of um, view but this time it will have the joists and everything in place so within DaisyCAD I can scroll around I can look at the products if I click on the products it will tell me um, what they are get, they get a, a, a J number so a reference number um, it, it tells me everything about that that particular product the the elevations the spacings the weight the type of joist you name it so you'll see there it was a, t a trust joist TGI member that we um, we designed originally so all those members have come through correctly let me close down DaisyCAD quickly um, you can't edit anything in that version of DaisyCAD that's a, a locked design but obviously we can edit as I said earlier the walls and that before then rerun it and, and get a different design uh, I can also download the output XMLX file and what that does now and I'm just going to do that quickly and just put it into um, this file over here um, what that does is it's now exported the joists in that which we can then re-import into our Revit file so we'll just park that there for one moment uh, we can also look at a PDF a download of a PDF and if I look at that quickly uh, it gives you a quick layout of that um, joist layout. It tells you the different joist products, their lengths, how many of each. 
uh, and then what we can do is put in a, a, a basic price breakdown and what you'll see on that layout is the boards as well so it's actually done a complete decking layout for you the red X boards are ones that need cutting the ones with the gray X are full sheets with no cutting so again the software can do you a full decking layout if you remember we talked earlier about the fact this was the mid setting so it was looking for a good mix between joists on center uh, and joists that didn't have to be on center but gave us the best uh, priced layout for those joists so you'll see that there are a couple of boards that need cutting in that design if that had been set to um, work with full sheets and, and no cutting all of the boards in the middle of this job would have been gray cross boards ie full boards and the joist centers would have been tweaked ever so slightly so let's close that down now quickly um, we also have csv file we can download that contains all the material products so if you want to you can download that and then link that to excel spreadsheets and, and the likes and get a full list of all the materials in that design uh, we also have a download zip that download zip contains all of these other documents all in one place so it contains that layout showing the materials it contains the xmlx files the input file the output files the whole lot and then we have a download log uh, that log basically is a complete list of what's happened in that design um, so yeah so that's there available as well and then obviously if you want to you can delete the job just click on the delete button and it will delete so right so that's uh, the daisy dashboard and uh, getting the design done so we've showcased a Revit job we've gone into that Revit job we've used the daisy button we've exported the walls that are needed to design that floor that we've chosen uh, we've then dumped that file back into daisy through the upload existing file button uh, we've waited for that to design the design status has come back succeeded we've got a completed design I've now taken the XMLX output file and I've dumped that into my desktop file over here. If I now go back into Revit and I open up my Revit model, I can now look at something different. I can now say import floor. If I click on import floor, it's going to ask me to go to where I've saved that document. So if I go to my desktop, I go to the folder and I open the file that I got out of the Daisy dashboard, I open that. Uh, first thing it's going to ask me is it's found 81 existing joists in the floor zone do I want to get rid of them so these are joists that an architect or somebody that's created the model uh, have put in as basic joists they haven't been designed they're just architecturally in there uh, so yes we want to get rid of those because we want to replace it with proper design joists so we're going to click yes on that and you'll see now it is it's deleted the jobs and it's now starting to create the jobs joists. You can see them going in just in the in the side of this model over here. So that's the design floor that's now being imported back in to the Revit model. So if we wait a short amount of time, what we'll find is all of those joists are going in at the at the level that we designed it, first floor. Um, let's just give it a few more seconds, and I think we should be there. beam materials going in so anything to do with that floor has now been imported into that job if I now go to that job and just get rid of a few bits and pieces here um, I can show you from the side that those joists are now in that floor zone the decks on and the joists And there they are so those are the joists that we physically designed using daisy uh, they've gone through daisy and we've managed to take it from the existing rivet model run them through daisy design them in daisy and then bring them back into that rivet model you now have fully designed floor joists in your rivet model